just like we did with the fellas, we need to look at three primary uh, structures of the female reproductive system. And the first one let's talk about, just like the fellas, let's talk about our gametes. This one's easy. We know that sperm, male gametes, must combine with eggs or ova, female gametes. Just like sperm, the ovum is, has 23 chromosomes. It has half the number of chromosomes, which means it's haploid, and that's how we end up um, making a baby. That cute little baby. Good thing they're cute. The gonads for the ladies, the gonads are uh, actually ovaries. So this is the site where ova are produced. And then did you think on the copulatory organ? Are you like, dude, what's the copulatory organ for the ladies? Like we don't have anything hanging outside of our bodies. And it's true. We don't have anything hanging outside our bodies because we have to have something that accepts the thing that hangs outside the fella's bodies, and that would be the vagina. Now, I'm going to spend a little bit of time debunking the use of the word vagina, because the way it is used, we describe all external genitalia as the vagina, and that's not accurate. The vagina is a very uh, specific muscular tube that if I were to highlight it, remember this was the bladder from our urinary system conversation? The vagina is this muscular tube, and I hope that you can see I'm, I'm drawing in the walls of the vagina, and you can see that it actually has a lumen or a space in the middle. So I just drew in the walls of the vagina, and of course, you know, I can't help it. Like I've got a color in the walls. Maybe we'll make the walls um, this color. So, so you can see that this is actually, I don't know if I'm making it look more hollow or less hollow. Kind of makes it look less hollow. I kind of want to erase all that, but I don't think I'm going to. That's a hollow tube. And it's a hollow tube. Got to throw my pen around a little bit. It's a hollow tube to accept the penis. And if you think about, like, why we're going to do that, that's a whole other conversation. Look, down here we're going to talk about making babies. So then what is the external stuff called? If, if what you see when somebody stands naked before you is not actually the vagina, I mean, really, literally, if you want to see someone's vagina, you have to look in, in pap smear view. That's the view that you have to take in order to actually see the vagina. What's the rest of that stuff? Well, you ha what you mostly see is someone standing in front of you is labia majora. And I'm going to come to a different, okay, but first of all, let me say this. External genitalia in females collectively is called the vulva. This is what you can see. And the vulva is primarily made up of labia majora. Labia majora, I'm going to show you where they are. Labia majora is the pubic hair covered lips that cover up over the vagina. So the vagina is a little hole, and the lips are of the big labia majora are sitting right there. So let's look, maybe this view. Yeah, this view is, is all right. You can see labia majora right here. You can see the muscular tube of the vagina right here, but it, this isn't a great view. So take a deep breath because I'm about to show you pap smear view. This might actually show us a little bit more, a little bit more, but this is like spreading apart labia majora. Labia majora is here so that we can actually look inside. Labia majora, like I said, if you just think labia majora is covered with pubic hair, those are the two lips that have hair on them. And so we've pulled those apart, and what you'll see inside of that in this space between labia majora, you'll see labia minora, and those are little non-hairy lips. Excuse me, did I call them labia majora too? That's labia minora, little lips. And at the top 
of labia minora, you have a very important structure called the clitoris. The clitoris, what is it for? Dude, I think the clitoris is all about making sure that sexual intercourse is pleasurable for female humans, which in some cases critters don't really care if it's pleasurable because some critters can overpower other critters. But in the case of humans, like, it tends to be important to make sure that both parties are consenting and enjoying the experience, which is beneficial for baby making because otherwise if it wasn't enjoyable, you wouldn't do it, and then you wouldn't have any babies and our species would not continue. So clitoris. Let me tell you a little bit about this clitoris that we speak of. The clitoris has a glands. Now, I'm telling you that it has a glands, and you're probably like, dude, who cares? And take a look over here. I've spelled glands. I haven't. This image is labeled. And glands, the glands of the clitoris is um, labeled here. I forgot to label the glands of the penis because a penis has a glands. So guess what the glands of the penis is? I don't know what color I'm in right here. It's the head of the penis. It's the part of the penis. Oh, we'll just color that thing in. This is the glands. The head of the penis, the little part that kind of bulges out like that, that's the glands. It's all erectile tissue, very sensitive. Ah, and the clitoris also, oops, has a glands, except that wasn't where I was. I found that picture here. Nope. Here, nope, here. No, yeah, that's where I was. But of course that's where I was. Now, the clitoris has a glands. The clitoris also has a prepuce or a foreskin, except we don't call it a foreskin on the clitoris, or maybe we do, I don't know. But the prepuce and the glands and it's erectile and it functions in pleasure. Interesting. Inferior to the clitoris, you have the urethral opening, and that is coming directly from the bladder. Nothing else comes out except for urine, but you'll see that that's actually a separate hole that is anterior to the vagina. This is the opening to the vagina. You don't have vagina unless you go in. Like the tube itself is the vagina. Okay, what else do you have to know? Nothing. Nothing. That's it. There will definitely be more because we're going to talk about more gross anatomy when we talk about how we need to combine things in order to make babies. But first, let's figure out how we're going to make our gametes so that we can make babies.